case at 12. The Night Beat starts right now. All right, taking a look at Doppler radar, we are tracking a severe thunderstorm that moved through Del Rio earlier this evening, Brackettville as well, and now is approaching western Uvalde County. Uh, this thunderstorm, severe thunderstorm warning will go until 10 15 p.m. 60 mile per hour winds possible, as well as hail up to one and a half inches in diameter. That's roughly the size of a lime or a lemon. Um, this thunderstorm will continue to move off to the east. It's possible that it could hold its strength, get to San Antonio and I 35. Uh, maybe Maybe within the next couple of hours, we've got Sierra Spivey here. Uh, so your weather team is tracking this supercell thunderstorm as it continues to move to the east. Bigger concern is a tornado watch that's out until 4 a.m. tomorrow morning. Storms will continue to be possible overnight, and they will be capable of producing tornadoes as well. We'll talk more about what you can expect through the overnight hours coming up. And just so you know what these storms are capable of, this was some hail that fell out in Del Rio from that supercell thunderstorm that's moving into western Uvalde County. Hail the size of lemons and baseballs. That baseball size hail is bigger than two and a half inches in diameter. We'll continue to track this severe thunderstorm, get you the latest and what you need to know as you get ready to head get ready to head to bed tonight. That's coming up in the full forecast. Tim, Jaffney. We're doing the right thing and we're doing it together. So don't let up now. Don't gather all the extended family and friends together for Easter tomorrow as much as we want to. Don't give up on staying home and staying safe. We have, we have some ways to go, but we're taking actions and, and we are making a difference, a huge difference. Mayor Ron Nuremberg addressing the city tonight during his daily COVID-19 briefing. With now more than 4,300 people tested, the mayor revealing tonight there are 723 positive cases here in Bear County. The death toll now standing at 27, including two more residents of the Southeast Nursing Home and Rehabilitation Center. County recoveries are now at 119. Across sex of the Department of State Health Services reporting more than 12,000 confirmed cases and more than 250 deaths. You can find a link to this dashboard map along with the latest numbers in Bear and surrounding counties at KSAT.com. Meanwhile, a second inmate at the Bear County Jail has tested positive for COVID-19. Bear County officials say that inmate developed a fever higher than 100 degrees yesterday. That's right. Afterwards, medical personnel did their evaluation, placing him in a negative pressure cell pending the results of his tests. Officials with the sheriff's office say early reports show that the inmate, who was a capital murder suspect, did not have any symptoms and was housed in a unit where there is minimal face-to-face -face contact and physical barriers like cell doors. At this time, officials believe the deputies who worked in the unit, as well as the inmates housed in the unit, are at low risk of contracting COVID-19. Judge Nelson Wolf says though the jail has potential for an outbreak, officials are doing everything they can within the confines of the jail to prevent that. The masks that are never required by all inmates, uh, cleaning down everything every day, uh, separating them as much as we possibly can within the jail. Uh, again, we review them before they come in, while they're in. We're doing a constant check-in with them to see if they have any symptoms coming up. And, uh, and then when they leave, we check for that too. So far, a total of two inmates, 14 deputies, one video visitation civilian employee, one dispatcher, and a facilities maintenance employee with the Bear County Sheriff's Office have tested positive. Gone are the sights, sounds, and even the smells of Easter weekend across San Antonio. City leaders have closed all of the city's parks to the public this weekend in an effort to prevent further spread of COVID-19. That means Easter camping, a long-standing tradition here in San Antonio when the city usually lifts the curfew at parks for three nights is not being allowed this year. Mayor Ron Nuremberg doubling down on this during his daily briefing tonight. We will have uh, park police uh, out um, monitoring, making sure that um, you know folks are are not congregating and, and endangering themselves and others. Uh, we are seeing good compliance. You know, by now there would have been tents pitched uh, in the parks mm -hmm. for for e for Easter weekend. Obviously, there's no camping this weekend. Walking, running, and biking trails will remain open at most parks, except for those the San Antonio River Authority has closed entirely just for the weekend. You can find all that information right now at ksat.com. 
Six burglaries across the span of four months, and San Antonio police say one man is to blame. Each burglary happening at a different location and each captured by surveillance, all leading to the arrest of 41-year-old Fidencio Soto yesterday. The police believe the string of burglaries began back in November when Soto allegedly broke into a home with three children inside. The 19th Stephen Cavasso spoke to the family who relived those frightening moments. I feel like he deserves what he gets. Sabrina Gaithan reacting to the news of Fidencio Soto's arrest. The man believed to be responsible for breaking into her home off Herald Court on the city's south side back in early November. Gaithan says her family has been living with a broken sense of security for months. And it made us feel like we weren't able to be comfortable inside of our home anymore. Gaithan says she has security cameras placed around her home. She says the day the burglary happened, she had left to get groceries. But after reviewing the video, that's when she got a clearer picture of what happened. That surveillance video shows Soto walking up to the home, which Gaithan believes he thought was empty, but inside were her three kids. The video shows Soto moving the camera away from his face before he's seen knocking on the front door. 14-year-old Vicente Lopez says he was watching his younger siblings while his mom was away. Get a little peek of him, but I didn't know who it was, so I didn't open the door. Two cameras located in the back of the home are also moved away from Soto's face. Lopez was in the living room when he heard someone trying to break through the back door. Lopez seen rushing to the back room. That's when he said he took his younger siblings to hide in the closet. Then the alarm went off and then he ran and then uh, the cops came. He says that's where they waited for a few minutes before they were found by a police officer. He says the moment has taught him an important lesson. Be aware of your surroundings. Pay attention to uh, other people. But Gaithan says she's still struggling to move on from the incident. It's hard to get over a break in, especially when your kids are involved. Stephen Cavasso's KSAT 12 News. New on the night beat, two people in critical condition following a crash involving a van. That crash happened today on the Highway 90 Access Road and eastbound Military Drive. Witnesses told police the van was stopped at a red light. That's when a motorcycle pulled up behind. They were unable to stop before striking the back of the van. Witnesses say the driver of the van got out, looked at the motorcycle, and then fled the scene. The motorcycle driver and passenger were transported to the hospital. Police have arrested a man in connection with the hit and run death of 25 year old woman last week. 31 year old Israel Lopez is charged with failure to stop and render aid. The incident happened on April 2nd in the 3200 block of Roosevelt. Police say the victim, Yvonne Arias, was in the crosswalk when a pickup truck hit her and left the scene. She was transported to the hospital where she later died. An update now to a story we first brought you last weekend an Eastside Church's women's recovery home destroyed by fire. And now, thanks to help from the community, those women and children have a new roof over their heads. The sold out Believers Christian Fellowship Church lost the recovery house after church leaders say a child accidentally started a fire in the backyard. That fire then spreading to the house, destroying everything inside and displacing eight women and three children. After the story originally aired, someone in the community stepped up and offered to house everyone. Thank you so much from the bottom of sold out Believers. Our church is very faithful. Uh, we care about the community. We'll continue to care about the community. Thank the community for caring about us. Pastor Ray Torres with the church says the Good Samaritan will be housing the women and children until they're able to find another shelter. And another positive update tonight, people in our community are stepping up to help the San Antonio Food Bank stay afloat amid a massive demand for food due to the coronavirus pandemic. Thursday, an unexpected 10,000 people showed up during a mega food distribution at Traders Village. Hundreds of volunteers, SAPD officers and staff scrambled for hours trying to provide food for thousands dealing with job losses and other financial struggles. Since then, Good Samaritans like Ambika, Martha have donated thousands of dollars to the nonprofit. Profit. So I challenge everybody to contribute whatever they can, you know, match what we are doing, exceed what we can do, what we are doing, you know, whatever they can do, whatever they are able to do, but let's get through this together. San Antonio author Shea Serrano has also raised more than $80,000. If you would like to see how you can help, visit our website at ksat.com. All right, taking a look outside with live cam. It's been a quiet day. 
And things are quiet out there right now in San Antonio, but that is not the case off to the west of the Alamo City, where a severe thunderstorm has rocked places like Del Rio and Brackettville this evening. That supercell thunderstorm now moving into Uvalde County. It does look like it's lost a little bit of its gusto, but still worth monitoring. And there is still a threat for some hail uh, working into Uvalde County as we speak. It's not to Uvalde or Highway 83 just yet, but it'll get there soon. And it still has a little bit of its supercell structure left to it. So this storm still dangerous, still could produce some large hail and damaging winds. We're going to keep a close eye on that cell as it continues to move east, potentially closer to the I-35 corridor. As we get closer to midnight, off to the west, back in Valverde County, more thunderstorm development. And that is likely going to be the activity that moves through overnight and into the pre-dawn hours of tomorrow morning. We're going to talk about everything, get you everything you need to know coming up in the full forecast. That'll be along in just a bit. Tim. A dangerous night. Thank you, Katie. Still to come on the night beat, the latest on the coronavirus pandemic here in the United States. After the break, some signs of hope as we cross more than half a million cases. It is a grim milestone. The U.S. is now the country with the most deaths from COVID-19. Officials in New York are optimistic the state may be at or near the apex. Meanwhile, other states taking steps to keep their citizens safe as millions are suffering financially. Here's ABC's Karina Mitchell with the latest. The United States reaching a grim milestone this weekend. More than 20,000 Americans have died from COVID-19. And in New York State, the hardest hit area in the U.S., the virus has killed more than 8,600 residents. But officials say there are signs the state may have reached its apex. That is not an all-time high. Uh, and you can see that the number is somewhat uh, stabilizing, but it is stabilizing at an horrific Great. Maimonides Hospital in Brooklyn has been giving ABC News a look at what it's like inside the ICU. I've never seen anything like this. This, this to me is like a mass casualty event. It's like, it's like war. The pandemic also taking a devastating toll on the economy. Nearly 17 million filing for unemployment over the past three weeks. However, ABC News has learned the first stimulus checks started going out this weekend. And in cities across the country, long lines at food banks. Nationwide states taking steps to keep people safe. In Michigan, Governor Gretchen Whitmer extending her stay-at-home orders, banning travel between two residences. The only exceptions taking care of sick loved ones, visiting nursing homes or for funerals. And in Texas, Governor Greg Abbott also increasing travel restrictions to his state. A 14-day quarantine is now required for all air travelers arriving from Miami, Atlanta, Detroit, Chicago, all California and Washington state airports. As Easter approaches, there are fears of new outbreaks as some still plan to gather to celebrate including the pastor of this church in Brighton, Michigan, and Pastor Jesse Horden in Jackson, Mississippi. We will more than likely have more than 10. We will be sitting spaced as they wish. Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir says anyone gathering this weekend, including those at in-person church services, will be required to quarantine for 14 days. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. Now, earlier in the show, we saw some baseball sized hail produced by some severe weather. Katie Blake's been tracking it all. Katie, what's the latest? Yeah, we've got a supercell thunderstorm west of San Antonio. This supercell originated in northern Mexico earlier this evening and then moved right through Del Rio in southern Valverde County and produced that large hail. Here are a few more KSAT Connect pictures for you of that hail reported in Del Rio. This one, it looks like it may be wider than the size of this apple and then some hail the size of baseballs. We've got a softball in the picture, too. I don't think it got quite that big, thankfully, but baseball size hail is big enough because that's almost that's big bigger than two and a half inches uh, in diameter. So major hail threat with this storm and uh, hail will continue to be an issue with storms as we head into the overnight hours. Here's that storm as it moved in from northern Mexico, moved right through Del Rio along the Highway 90 corridor near Brackettville. And now the storm is working into central Uvalde County, and we've got a new severe thunderstorm warning on this storm. We're going to dig right into it in just a second. But hail, not the only concern with storms as we head into the overnight and pre-dawn hours. Also, damaging straight line winds will become a concern mainly later in the night and very early tomorrow morning. And because that supercell, um, has 
had a history of having tornado warnings on it. It's been trying to rotate. Tornadoes will be possible. I think the threat for that will mainly be with this supercell that's out there now. Uh, but even as we head into the overnight hours, please keep in mind that uh, storms capable of producing tornadoes will be possible. And we've got a tornado watch out for all the counties in red here. This is a good chunk of the KSAP viewing area, including most of the hill country, San Antonio and Bear County, and even a few of our southeastern most counties. That's going to go until 4 o'clock tomorrow morning. So that's why I can't stress enough that you must make sure you have a way to receive severe weather alerts while you're sleeping tonight because a lot of us are going to see thunderstorm activity while we're asleep. So you got to have something that will wake you up. You've also got to have a plan in place so that if there's severe weather moving through in the middle of the night, you know where you and your family need to go. Let's get back to Doppler radar. There's the tornado watch box. That's what I was just showing you. And then we've got our severe thunderstorm that continues to track off to the east. This is moving east at roughly 35 miles per hour. Uh, and I do want to take a closer look into this storm for you here. So I'm going to use a little bit of hand tracking. So we'll get down closer here. Um, the structure of this storm has typically been that of a supercell. So we've got the big kind of updraft flank here um, and then the little kind of appendage here on the bottom. This is the part of the storm that has had a history of trying to rotate and was previously tornado warned. It's not tornado warned at the moment, but the National Weather Service is keeping an eye on it. Just the way our atmosphere is stacked today, it's really easy for these storms to try to twist and rotate, and that leads to the potential for some tornadoes. So no tornado warning right now. And the worst of this storm is going to miss Uvalde just to the north, but Con Can there along uh, Highway 83, you're getting some heavy rain moving in now. And really quickly, we'll dissect this storm and see where we could maybe have a hail core right now. So we're looking for kind of blue and gray color. So compared to the history of this storm, this is not nearly as big of a hail core as what we have seen. Nonetheless, some hail still possible along 55 here. So we'll do a quick little query and see what we can try to figure out as far as hail size go. Keep in mind, this is our radar product for estimating hail size until we really get reports. It's hard to know. Um, some of the reports back, of course, in Del Rio, Brackettville, very large hail and the hail core signature looked much better there. This looks like some smaller hail, so maybe hail up to the size of quarters, but the formal severe thunderstorm warning on this storm does include hail up to one and a half inches in diameter, and that would be approaching the size of a lime or a lemon, and that's certainly nothing uh, that you want to fall on you where you live. So another look at radar here. Again, this storm is moving off to the east at 35 miles per hour. So I do want our friends over in Medina County to keep a very close eye on this storm. Uh, even those of you, those of us here in San Antonio, if this maintains its eastward progress and can even hold its strength as it currently is right now, that would bring a threat of some hail into San Antonio and Bear County roughly in the 12 a.m. hour. Thank you, Sarah, for putting that track on there. So uh, Sabinal closer to 11 p.m., Hondo 1130, Castroville right about midnight, and then Helotus there in northwestern Bear County right about 1230. So as we start to get closer to midnight, that's when the concern for some uh, for this storm to get to San Antonio uh, will kick in. So from midnight through the pre-dawn hours of tomorrow morning, roughly 5 o'clock in the morning, that's when severe thunderstorms will be possible in and around San Antonio. Again, have a way to get severe weather alerts overnight tonight. You can use the KSAT weather app for that. Just make sure you go into the settings in your phone and enable notifications. But as quickly as all this moves in, it's going to move out by dawn tomorrow morning. A couple of lingering showers possible, 6, 7 a.m., and then we'll see skies clear out really quickly. And you're going to like your Easter Sunday forecast. So let's quickly walk through future cast. So this particular high res model didn't pick up on that supercell that's out there right now. So that's kind of an extra little aspect to the forecast that we need to consider. So keeping a close eye on that storm. But what's developing off in northern Mexico and far west Texas now is expected to grow in coverage and intensity as we approach midnight. So we'll have to consider that supercell. We'll also have to consider storms developing farther off to the west, continuing to move east here. Um, and this is where we could have a concern for some hail and also some damaging winds overnight. But again, look how things clear out beautifully for us uh, by Easter morning. Morning and Easter afternoon will be warm and sunny, but quite windy with wind gusts up to 35, 40 miles per hour tomorrow. That's really the only thing we'll be able to complain about. We'll have more updates for you coming up later on the night beat. Guys. Utah Jazz center Rudy Gobert was the first NBA player to test positive for the coronavirus back in March. After he did, the league immediately suspended the season on the night of March 11th. 
Gobert was widely criticized for his behavior two days prior to testing positive when he touched every reporter's mic and recording device as a joke as he left the podium. And he was reportedly careless inside the Jazz locker room. Well, his antics didn't set well with Spurs guard Marco Bellinelli, who's very sensitive to this matter because the virus, as we know, has hit his home country of Italy very hard. Bailey told an Italian outlet, quote, terrible. I prefer not to express myself because I don't want to say things that then seem offensive or too serious. But what he did was, yes, terrible, end quote. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. With the NFL draft rapidly approaching, the Dallas Cowboys are working Zoom to meet with potential draft picks. The boys are posting part of those virtual interviews online. It's pretty cool to watch. This week, Jerry Jones and his crew spoke with TCU wide receiver Jalen Rager, who's also a dynamic kick returner. His father, Monty Rager, is a nine-year NFL vet, last playing in 2007 with the Eagles. Coming in, and you could possibly be taking food out of someone's mouth, so you just got to approach it the right way um don't get too high don't get don't get too low and just keep a steady mindset you know through the ups and downs because it's going to be a lot because it's a course of a long season and uh if you plan on having a long career you got to do things the right way and my dad he did things the right way that's why he, he played in the league nine years so if you're here for a long time you're doing something right that was advice given to him by his father. Meanwhile, Texans linebacker Brennan Scarlett, who went undrafted in 2016, is having a solid career for the AFC South squad. Last season, he registered 51 total tackles, three and a half sacks, both career highs. He signed through the 2020 season and was asked by Mark Vandermeer about training since gyms and team facilities are shut down. For me, luckily, it hasn't changed too much. Um, normally, I train at the Nike headquarters out in Beaverton which is about 25 minutes from my house. Um, so that shut down. So we, ha we haven't been able to do that, but there's a local high school that, uh, that I've been able to get into and use the gym and uh, also a physical therapy clinic uh, because that's been deemed essential business. So um, been able to use stuff and, and, and my trainer has been getting on virtually um, with me and another one of my workout partners. So our group is together, you know, for the most part, whether it be virtually or, or here, but we're still getting our work in. Coming up later in sports, Dak and Zeke under fire again for their lack of social distancing. We'll be right back after the break. Virtual Passover seders and streaming Holy Week masses are just a few of the ways the faithful are practicing their religion during a time of social distancing. But some communities are defying orders to stay at home and avoid large gatherings. Here's ABC's Rachel Scott with the details. At a time when many are turning to their faith for comfort, churches, synagogues, and mosques are empty. A virus doesn't care what your religion is. Pain and suffering is the great unifier. Sometimes when pain comes, it causes people to turn to God, and it causes other people to turn away from God. The streets of Jerusalem, holy to all three major religions, empty. Many now finding creative ways to worship. Passover seders being held virtually, and Holy Week services are being live streamed. New Orleans Archbishop Gregory Amen and Rabbi Alexis Erdheim flying separately over the city, asking for God's blessing. This pastor in Ohio printing photos of his parishioners. It was an amazingly prayerful moment to be in a quiet chapel, kind of in the dark. And every time I put a picture up, I could, you know, remember the people who I was praying for and think about them. Earlier this week, Vice President Mike Pence said he will attend the virtual Easter services of his Indiana church from his living room. In Arizona, Pastor Nathan Bentley had planned to host Easter services outside, providing mass and limiting participation. But those plans canceled after many feared it was a disaster waiting to happen. I want the community to know that I'm truly sorry to cause fear. That was never my intent. We want the safety of our neighbors. We, we want the best for our neighbors. And so I humbly apologize. But communities are defying social distancing guidelines. The Supreme Court in Kansas hearing arguments to determine whether congregations can gather with more than 10 people. With a shockingly irresponsible decision that will put every Kansas life at risk. Overseas, Pope Francis celebrating Easter Vigil Mass in an empty St. Peter's Basilica. And in Germany, drive-in theaters are making a comeback. Cathedrals of cars. Rachel Scott, ABC News, Washington.
At least 550 sailors from the USS Theodore Roosevelt have tested positive for coronavirus, and almost all of the sailors have now been assessed. Nearly 3,700 of the ship's crew have been moved ashore, and at least one sailor is in the hospital after being found unresponsive. The Roosevelt has been the source of recent controversy. Its captain was dismissed after sounding the alarm about the COVID-19 outbreak on board. Shortly after, the Navy secretary resigned after appearing to mishandle the aftermath of that dismissal. Meanwhile, new cases have been reported among the crew of a hospital ship now docked in Los Angeles. The Navy reports two crew members aboard the USNS Mercy have tested positive for COVID-19. That means three people on the ship's crew are now being treated for the disease. The Navy says they are being isolated off of the ship. The Mercy is being used to treat patients who do not have COVID-19 in an effort to free up space at hospitals. The Pentagon is working to produce upward of 39 million N95 respirator masks. It's the first project the Defense Production Act has authorized to address the coronavirus pandemic. A pandemic spokesperson says the White House gave the military formal authorization for the project last night. It will cost about $133 million. As of right now, the Pentagon is not yet naming the companies involved in creating the masks, which are in short supply nationwide. Health, health experts say they're critical in keeping medical personnel personnel safe and slowing the spread of the coronavirus. Boeing has rolled out a new 3D reusable face masks. The company says it's already delivered more than 2,000 of the shields to the federal government. Boeing says the Department of Health and Human Services will deliver them to a center in Dallas, helping treat patients with COVID-19. The airline manufacturer plans to make thousands of face shields every week. Gyms were among the first to close up shop when the pandemic got underway. After the break, what you can do from home to make up for missed gym time. As millions of people are staying home, that means not going out to the gym, but that does not mean you have to give up your workout altogether. So you have no excuse. 12 on your side is Marilyn Morris has some easy ways to make home exercise a part of your new routine. Gisela Long is a cancer survivor. She also has asthma and a compromised immune system. She can't afford to be unnecessarily exposed to germs. I'd rather work out from home because that way I feel more safe. It's my own equipment. I know it's clean and I'm not touching something that anybody else touch. With gyms closed, many people are working out at home for physical and mental health and to avoid going stir crazy. If you're not sure what to do, here are some options online training or a virtual training app can give you fitness results and flexibility of doing it on your own time. If you have a treadmill or elliptical, dust it off. Try a little cardio every day to boost energy and clear your mind. If you don't have a machine, find some stairs to run, jump rope, or good old-fashioned jumping jacks. You can also do some high-intensity interval training. Strength training helps preserve muscle mass and maintain metabolism, and it can be done effectively using little more than your own body weight or small hand weights. The goal? To stay active and healthy while you're home. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Outside with live cam, 74 degrees, no rain here in the Alamo City just yet, but we're keeping a very close eye on a severe thunderstorm west of Bear County, moving into central Uvalde County as we speak, the severe thunderstorm capable of producing some large hail and also some damaging winds as well, maintaining its supercell structure here. So this is still a very dangerous storm. The worst of this will be north of Uvalde, but 83 between Concan and Uvalde. You're getting the worst of it now, and the storm will continue to move east. We'll put a track on this, let you know when it could potentially make it to the I-35 corridor and get you your forecast for the rest of the night coming up in just a couple of minutes. It has been a dangerous night out there. You know things are serious when Katie is joined by half of the weather team. Adam yeah. Kasky now here with Sarah Spivey, all tracking these storms. <laughs> yes, there they are. <laughs> Kasky with the shirt untucked. One big family. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, we're keeping a close eye on things for you because we're going to continue a chance of some strong to severe storms as we get into the pre-dawn hours of Easter morning. The story so far has been a severe thunderstorm that produced some grapefruit-sized hail out in Del Rio earlier this evening. That supercell 
uh, moved right through southern Valverde County all the way through Kinney County and Brackettville. It produced some large hail there as well. It was briefly tornado warned because of some rotation, uh, but that rotation has since let up and now we're left with a severe thunderstorm warning, but this is still not a storm to mess with at all. It has weakened and doesn't look as impressive on radar as it looked earlier in the evening when it was producing that very large hail out in Del Rio and Brackettville. So since it produced that massive damaging hail, it has weakened a good bit. And when you look at it on radar, you can still kind of see the supercell structure and something that almost kind of looks like a hook here, uh, but it's kind of starting to look a bit more frazzled and not as organized. And that is good because that means the potential for it to continue to produce that very large hail and even a tornado is less and less as it continues to look very disorganized. Nonetheless, though, some heavy rain here, frequent lightning. Um, and here's the track on this storm. So it's moving east at about 35 miles per hour. So at this pace, if it holds itself together, it would approach Sabinal around 11.09 p.m. to Hennis, 11.30. Hondo 1142 Castroville uh, a few minutes after midnight and then Bernie um, about 1230. So would roughly be working into uh, Western Bear County sometime after midnight. So we'll keep a very close eye on this storm over the next couple of hours because it is the most immediate concern of all the storms that we have out there on radar. So I do quickly want to take a look at the hail on this storm. Um, if you were with us last half hour, we were looking at the hail core and compared to how the hail core looked when it was out in Del Rio, it was much smaller and that continues to be the case. So we'll zoom in a little bit closer here. So this is between Uvalde and Concan. So if there is hail, um, it has missed those two populated areas, which is uh, some good news. But a quick query will show us that some hail, um, prob the warning is for hail up to an inch and a half in diameter, and that's about what our hail product is registering. So that's roughly the size of a lime or a lemon, and it's certainly not anything you want falling on your vehicle or anything like that. Um, so hail, definitely still an issue. Uh, with this storm and you could also have some strong winds up to 60 miles per hour as well. We'll go back to our home view here, kind of reset. Again, we've got this severe thunderstorm uh, there. Things are quiet in San Antonio for now, but we're going to keep a really close eye uh, on that storm as it continues to move off to the east. And then there's some additional activity brewing out in Valverde County and then up closer to the Concho Valley. And that's what could continue to move east and fill in overnight tonight. So from this point on really in San Antonio from midnight when that supercell storm could wander into Bear County through about four or five o'clock in the morning, severe storms will be possible. But once we get to dawn tomorrow morning, things will be starting to wrap up by eight o'clock. We're starting to see a little bit of sun and by 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, a lot of sunshine and things will be turning breezy. So I do want to look at future cast. This model is not seeing that thunder that supercell that's out there in New Valley County right now. So that is something to consider. So as we get to midnight, We'll have to watch and see where that supercell goes because it could be working closer to the I-35 corridor. But then we've also got more thunderstorm activity that is expected to organize and grow in coverage. And this will also head east. And I think the biggest issues with these storms will be for some large hail and also for some damaging straight line winds. Because if these storms kind of form a line and what do what we kind of call bowing out, that would be more of a concern for some damaging straight line, not necessarily tornadic winds, but because of the way our atmosphere is juiced up and stacked tonight, can't roll out another spin up tornado along this line of storms as it pushes through into the pre dawn hours of Sunday morning. So Sunday 5 a.m. San Antonio things are clearing out our eastern counties, some storms moving through, but everyone will really see things relax and let up and even some sunshine returning to the forecast by tomorrow morning. So concerns as far as specific storm threats continue to mainly be for large hail damaging winds, but because we have some rotation in those storms, a tornado will also be possible as we head into the pre dawn hours of tomorrow morning. And because of that, we've got a tornado watch in place until four o'clock. So if your county is in red tornado watch in place until four o'clock tomorrow morning. So please have a way to get severe weather alerts tonight while you're sleeping. I can't stress that enough. A great way to do that is to have the case out weather app. You'll get the alerts. You can also watch us as we Look at these storms and keep track of things overnight. That's certainly what Sarah, Adam and I will be doing even after the night beat is over. So if you'd like more storm coverage, you can download the KSAT weather app. Make sure you allow notifications uh, so that you can get severe weather alerts tonight. Look at your Easter Sunday, sunny and warm, but windy wind gusts 35 to 40 miles per hour at times tomorrow, especially in the afternoon. A dry cold front moves in Monday morning that cools us off and sets us up for some quiet 
but nice weather days next week. If there is another Oval next week, would you be up for it again? Definitely. Um, I, I really appreciate the invite. And I think I need to do a better account of myself as far as just showing pure speed. NASCAR legend Dale Earnhardt Jr. took on the best in IndyCar racing this afternoon, and he'd love to do it again next week in Big Board Sports. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott is making headlines for a reported disregard of coronavirus mandates. According to TMZ, Dak hosted a birthday party for a friend Friday night at his house in Prosper, and star running back Ezekiel Elliott was one of the guests. They say at the height of the bash, there were about 30 guests. Photos from the party show guests were not practicing social, social distancing, standing closer than six feet and gathering in a group larger than 10. Prosper PD told TMZ Sports it responded to a report of a potential party at Dak's house, but the officer was unable to confirm the report. Tampa Bay QB Tom Brady wants to make sure any creative naming combinations fans can think of belong to him first. Agents for Brady are looking to trademark Tampa Bay Tampa Brady and TBXTB. But as ESPN reports, some fans were one step ahead submitting applications to trademark the names before the QB. Like the rest of the pro sporting world, San Antonio FC is waiting to see when and where their season will resume. But instead of going home to spend time with friends and family, most of SAFC players and coaching staff are still here in the Alamo City. They have found other ways to stay in contact with each other and build team chemistry, including training sessions over Zoom. Defender Hunter Gorski says that during this hiatus, the team's main focus is pretty simple. Being responsible because you know we're not just accountable for ourselves we're accountable for our whole team and and largely the community right we don't want any we don't want to contribute to the spread in any way so i think it's you know we have to be diligent and take care of ourselves that also takes into account our diet you know right now we're not on the field running as much and and it's a different type of fitness right now so you really have to be careful what you're putting inside your body um, and then you know the other focus is is just uh, is just staying present and and just taking it, taking it a day at a time and just, you know, trying to be your best self. The latest update from the USL says that teams are restricted from training in person until April 20th, which is nine days from now. This is as close as I'll probably get to the real thing. And that's why I like it. You know, I can do it from the comfort of my own home. And I'm racing against guys that are real race car drivers. NASCAR legend Dale Jr. took on the best IndyCar has to offer this afternoon in the iRacing Challenge at Michigan, and he avoids some chaos right at the start of the race. Multiple cars crashing into each other. Luckily, it's all virtual. Earnhardt manages his fuel well and ends up moving up to take third in the final lap, securing a podium finish in his first ever Indy car race. But Indy 500 champion Simon Pagano hangs on down the stretch to claim the victory. He celebrated with a champagne bottle his wife had purchased for him in advance. <laughs> Spurs shooting guard Bryn Forbes is here to pump you up. He's staying busy at home with his two young boys with some bench press action. You know his two sons love that. That's some heavy weight lifting there. There you go. <laughs> and it's super adorable too. <laughs> it is. Stay with us. <laughs> It's a lasting legacy that will never fade. Selena Quintanilla was just about to be 24 when she was murdered in 1995. Since then, her popularity has grown and she continues to break records even today. Selena broke many barriers and is the number one selling Latin artist of all time with 70 million records sold worldwide. I don't think when we were doing what we were doing, I don't think we had an idea of the impact of the music, the impact of Selena, her legacy, what she stand for back then and even more so now. For more on Selena's legacy, make sure to watch our one hour special on the Queen of Tejano music. It's called Siempre Selena and it airs right here on KSAT 12 tomorrow at 9 p.m. Well, that does it all for the time that we have for tonight. Thanks for watching. Those storms are still out there. Katie, Adam and Sarah are standing by in the Weather Center. They are tracking them all for you right now. They will be here throughout the night. Uh, they will be on the live stream on KSAT.com or on KSAT uh, Facebook page, and they'll be cutting in as necessary, so stay tuned for that. Stay safe, and we'll see you tomorrow. Have a good night.